So normally when we record these, we record them the day that the episode is released. Unless stated otherwise in the video, that's, that's usually when we do our stuff in an attempt to avoid spoilers. Um, this one, we're almost 48 hours later. Yeah. Or at least 36. And you know, hey, no one said anything spoilery. Yay! Which, which tells me that nothing massive happened this episode. It also helps just not looking at Twitter in general. Yeah. But just that, that also tells me that, you know... There's nothing completely insane in this episode because nobody has utterly lost their shit and flooded their time. I'm really hoping <laughs> that, like, no one dies or this is out. Nothing insane could possibly happen in this episode. <laughs> Penny, no, not again! <laughs> we, we have the technology. We can rebuild her. God, I hope so. Oh, wait, the core is cracked. So, kids, how is your uh, dealing with loss skills? How are those going? Oh, I, just made my, turn. I just made myself sad. Yeah, I think you made everyone sad. I'm not the one who did it. You did it. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, so this is going well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're here for Ruby on <laughs> Sunday night. Anyway, before we get started, as always, we have our wonderful library. We are sponsored by Fred's BS. Breads and spreads by Fred. Cookies, brownies, jams, things that you should bring to, I would say, bring to your Thanksgiving table, but it's a little late for that now. Um, they bring to your Christmas table, to holiday parties, as gifts for coworkers or friends or roommates or whomever. Like, bring them baked goods because they are wonderful. Uh, everything is fresh, never frozen. Everything is made in small batches to preserve those fresh flavors. That's a contradiction of terms, and that's fine. Uh... Anyway, everything is made in small batches. There's no, I made 35 cookies and then froze them and waited for orders. That's not how Fred do. He makes them fresh to order. Um, flavors are unique. They cannot be found in stores. And as always, if you are an LA local and you, you can do pickup instead of delivery and get your goods even sooner. So the way you order Fred's is to contact Fred. The info's down there. The info is also at the end card for this video. If you want to pause the video and order Fred's right now, I would not blame you. Fred's is amazing. We will be here when you get back because this is pre-recorded. <laughs> so, Fred's BS. Obtain things. Treat yourself. You deserve it. Cookies for you, brownies for me, jam for your jam buds, and holiday treats for, I don't know, people that you know. Dip those brown sugar buddies into your holiday drink of choice. They will go with all of them, I promise you. They're really good with coffee and with Trader Joe's seasonal tea. It's really good. Pumpkin spice lattes, chai lattes, oh, anything lattes. I was gonna say, Can you it's, imagine in peppermint hot chocolate. We're we're like by the time this video gets uploaded, we are firmly in peppermint town mm. when it comes to coffee drinks. You say that like I haven't already been in peppermint town for like a week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I got my red cup and I'm yet. good to go. I'm just saying that come December first, pumpkin spice is gonna disappear. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Ruby, Volume Seven, Chapter Four, Pomp and Circumstance. Who's graduating? Who's graduating? I mean, our kids have graduated from the School of Hard Knocks. No, no they seen. haven't. Uh, have you seen where they've been? They're the last? still. Oh, they're still smack in the middle of it. Let's be <laughs> real. Whatever. They're still taking classes. This Fine. is fine. Hit the button. All right. Click. I think that's a good volume level. We'll see. It's all still so good. This is such a good opening. It is. Because I've been watching so much Disney Plus, I keep expecting the, the skip Disney intro oh, no. thing, no. and I'm like, no, get out of here, you. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out which is the bigger sin. Disney Plus's skip intro on DuckTales? Or Netflix's skip intro on Evangelion? The answer is yes. yes. <laughs> Honestly, I think Ava more. Yeah? Do you think so? Yes, because occasionally DuckTales will skip its own theme song. This is true. Ava tends not to do No, that. you never skip that. Ava tends to be like, Ava. this is 90 seconds of joy, which you will not have in the rest of this episode. Just now. <laughs> the rest of this will murder you. Thank you, Ava. I can also listen to uh, Cruel Angel's thesis literally any time of on the repeat. day. Yeah. There have been days where I've listened to it on repeat the Why entire day. 
Why would you I don't not though? And DuckTales is a great song, but I don't like, I don't think I could listen to it for an entire day without going insane. <laughs> Does it help that you don't speak the language for the language basis? No, the emotions behind both songs are so different. Uh, this is true. I was gonna say, what are you talking about? Sometimes it's easier to listen to something if you don't have to think about the words. No, the emotional context for both are very, very different. The only thing they this have in is common true. is nostalgia. You crazy? <laughs> this is gorgeous. It really is. Oh my gosh. This is Leviathan! Oh, oh wow, that, mmm. It's adorable! I'm sure she gets real tired of being called adorable. Watch, they're gonna pull a Zootopia and, spoiler alert, she's the big bad. <laughs> she's Salem in disguise. Actually, didn't Mark postulate a sheep in wolf's clothing? Yeah. At one point? A wolf in sheep's clothing. Yes, both. <laughs> oh my god. Aesops are handpicked to perfectly complement one another, so we can focus on our assets uh -huh. and leave our liabilities behind. Some of us are all asset, zero liability. And not you. <laughs> yeah? Think I've got some liabilities, Elm? Your brains, for one. <laughs> <laughs> Queen. Well, oh, he's the Jean of their team. <laughs> Teamwork. Oh, yeah. I want to have my friends' backs just like that. Friends? <laughs> this isn't the schoolyard, kid. <laughs> <laughs> but Are we sure this is Ruby and not Ruby Chibi? It kind of changes things, doesn't it? With Nora, it doesn't matter. I get along well enough, sure. I count on them to keep me alive. They do the same. But that's a job. We don't confuse the two. Jeez. Speaking of the job, Hero's letting you down a bit. You can't be friends and professionals. We'll hang back a second. I really hope this doesn't turn into a um. What do you guys want to do when we get back to Ironwood? Alice? Orders like them oh, to go against Team first? Ruby, and then like Better they guys. turn into assholes. Oh, guys, this is a great time to go exploring. We've been doing that in so long. Ruby, we just explored a whole continent on foot. Before flying to this one. Well, yeah, but it was only the boring parts. <laughs> we almost died. <laughs> <laughs> that happens a lot. Aww. Heads up. We Gotta almost get died. The two over here. There's something I'd like to discuss with you. You too, Crow. <laughs> I need you on the ground. I need the so, adults and Crow. <laughs> people see too many huntsmen milling around, they'll get nervous. And Clover? Don't take Maro. Oh! <laughs> oh! Maybe. Is that because he's a faunus? Or just because he's Maro? Someone in Mantle is because he's Maro. Public leaders who speak out against Atlas. Specifically, mm. people who speak out against me. It didn't look like a pattern at first. This is the third murder of its kind in the last week. Wait Called it. That's the guy that rode with us after we were arrested. He died? Your mm. opposition to Mantle dropping dead isn't exactly a good look for you, huh? I'm not really worried about my public image, but it is causing unrest. I think someone's trying to frame me, and by extension, Atlas. And it's working. Oh. Well, if it wasn't for the embargo making everybody so mad, people probably wouldn't be so quick to blame you for everything else. <clears throat> Sir. Oh. No. No, you're right. Things in Mantle have been hard to manage lately. I'm not blind to its issues. In fact, that's what I want to talk to you about. With the launch of this mobile communications tower and tensions down in Mantle, I think there's a lot of good your teams can do here. What? Already? Here? No, it's fine. Let him land. I'll deal with him myself. More mantle problems? No, 
Oh, Papa Schnee. This one's an Atlas problem. Oh, fuck. Shiza. Oh, I didn't want this. No! Nobody wants this. No! No! In addition to this nonsensical embargo of yours crippling my business, you've also decided you have oh. the authority to commandeer private property. Abort! Evacuate! <laughs> Get out of there, girls! Actually, I've already informed them. As this is now the site of a classified military operation, it didn't even require a vote. Didn't require a vote! You might want to brush up on council law before you lose this upcoming election job. Now, okay. I've allowed you to land here once as a courtesy. The next time it won't be a friendly reception. Lately, you seem to forget who your friends really are. I'm going to get that council seat, James, and maybe then you... Oh dear. Hi, Dad. You... You roped my missing daughter into these schemes of yours, too? How long has she been back in Atlas? Did Winter know it about this? It was my decision to come here. Just like it was my decision to leave. Or have you forgotten all about that? If you think I'm one to forget anything, girl, then you've misjudged the man your father You slapped her! Oh, Fuck off! I know exactly the kind of man you are. How dare you speak to me that way! I have half a mind to- Half a mind to what, Shark? Yeah, Iron Daddy! <laughs> you know, your mother was devastated when you left. Mom noticed? Didn't leave her room for days. You know how she gets when she's upset. Wow, we're going to play that card. I knew one day you would overexpect He also might be lying and just locked her in her room because he couldn't lock her away. I came here to thank you for personally handing me the noose to hang you. are the little friends you threw everything away for. Not friends. Family. Family. Aww. Yeah, get out of here. Nobody invited you. Go away. Bye, Felicia. Ugh. Oh, now you show up, Winter. You just missed father. I wouldn't say I missed. <laughs> I love her. Uh, did we not start yet? <sighs> Apparently, we haven't. <laughs> start what? Quietly breaks the tension. It goes without oh, saying that this is the best significance to all of us. It's only fitting that we should be able to reconvene here now. When the world needs to be brought together more than ever. Oh. The road you traveled from our first meeting hasn't been easy. You fought for your school and your friends at Beacon. <laughs> you the world in the at Haven Academy and beyond. You face down terrors people can't even fathom. That's not the behavior of students. Yeah, it's they killed an ugly bee. Of huntsmen and huntresses. <gasps> they are graduating! Holy cow. Wait. What is this? You are being granted your huntsman licenses. Today. I know this is coming a little ahead of schedule, but mm. brothers know you deserve it. I only regret that I couldn't do something a little more ceremonious for the occasion. Brothers know as opposed to God know. <laughs> we were honored, General Ironwood. But you really don't have Please. to do With the threat of Salem still out there and tensions rising Please. in our kingdom. This'll help me seem more credible to all of you. By my side. I should be so lucky to have all of you. It's okay. I really it's hope this moment. isn't being overly and manipulative. Way to celebrate you. When this tower is ready and communications are back up and running, we'll tell the world about Satan and face down whatever comes at us after that. No. Together. That's just about all the pomp I have in me. If you'll excuse me, I have to get back to running this operation. Uh, well then, enjoy the cake. I don't know how to leave a party. <laughs> Your speech outros are 
are improving, sir. <laughs> After everything we've been through, I almost forgot this is what I wanted in the first place. When Beacon fell, I didn't think this would even be possible. It almost feels trivial now. Jeez, guys, lighten up a little. Enjoy yourselves for a change. You've earned it. Go party. Finally, someone said it. Let's kill some kick, huh? <laughs> I can eat two slices before Ren even eats one. Who said that shit? Who said that? <laughs> Nobody is arguing with you about this. I'll show you. <laughs> I don't even want cake. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Exceedingly helpful cutting. at parties. Nora. And it was clicking. Definitely a lot to take in. Which bar? All of it. Fun to get in the Atlas part, hit your license part, but they're not quite disclosing everything the Ironwood part. <laughs> or all of the above. <laughs> all of the above. No. I'm trying to do what I think is best, but I really can't tell if what's best is what's right. Where's Oscar? Or if I'm no different from Oz. Why didn't they bring him here for this? Because he doesn't get to graduate. You're trusting others. Red like Rose themselves first. I think that's a pretty big difference. I hope so. This says I'm a huntress now. But I don't feel like I know much more than I did at Beacon. That feeling never goes away. Welcome to being a grown up. cliche. Oh my gosh, is that a mission board? It's an app now? Oh my god, I'm alive. Stop an underground crime ring. Do I get to go? Undercover. Hey, sweetie. Hey, you guys smell that? <laughs> Smells like fresh meat. That's odd. I don't smell meat. Neither do I. <laughs> you know what? Never mind. <gasps> what is a metaphor? You've only been official for an hour now, and you're already looking for Huntsman work? To be fair, we've been official for a whole 57 minutes. <laughs> you all that the real mission Alexa, is the successful off. launch of the communications tower. True, but we can also keep training and improving by helping where we can. <sighs> the enthusiasm of you! <laughs> it's hard to argue with that. Love her? Okay, let me show you how it works. I like her. Ooh, here's an important one. Who wants to volunteer? Well, right. We need someone to escort children to pre-primary school down in Mantle. There's not actually any danger, but the parents fret, and that attracts grim. Perfect! John! Juan? Juan? Jim? Close enough, I guess. <laughs> My first huntsman mission. That is your lot in life. Oh, and you were the slowest him, to say not it. Him oh, volunteering shit, to go like chaperone kids is gonna be real cute. I hope we get to see it. You, um, have a visitor. Hello, Shitley. I told you, I Gotta didn't be wasp. Why did you let them in? I didn't. He let himself in. A spitting image of you, this lad, Chuck. Yeah. So am I that? He's definitely inherited your. What if they're related? Arthur. Because he took... And he, shut the door. He took the Schnee last name. I said shut the door! What if they're brothers? Oh, shit. Right. 
Boy, that would be a awesome. supposed to be dead. That is what I wanted people to think, you're right. However, <laughs> things about you too, Jacques. Namely, that you have an ironwork problem. <laughs> that bastard is costing me more money every day with this embargo. I'd lay off every employee in Mantle if I wasn't trying to get their damn votes for this council seat. What if I said you could have your cake and eat it too? Boy, I like none of this. I mean, I mean, I I adore this, but I'm worried. That's that's what I mean by that. It's entirely possible that they're not, that they're just two different people who like lived in Atlas. But I mean, their mustaches are very similar. Yeah, they have very similar builds. Yeah, very similar facial structures. Uh, they could be related. Which would just be like, uh... That portrait of a younger shock. Yep. Um, I think he has black hair. But again, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Uh, I mean, either way, we don't want them talking, even if they're not related. Yeah, no kidding, especially since Jacques would actually listen to him. They seem yeah. to know each other. I was gonna say, it It legitimately doesn't matter if they're related or not, it just yeah. matters but that, But boy, like, would that be an extra fun little twist. <laughs> it, it just ma what matters is that Watts is here, and Jacques is pissed at Ironwood for multiple reasons. Yeah. Embargo, the disrespect, uh, having both of his daughters. <laughs> both of his daughters like, bye. <laughs> See you later, nobody likes you. <laughs> I'm not surprised that they gave them their huntsman licenses because just in terms of legality and whatnot, it's so much easier to just, oh yes, these are licensed huntsmen, oh, yeah. go for it, as opposed to, of the it's a bunch of students who still need a chaperone. Yeah. Like, no, this, this, I don't see it as a bribery move. I see it as a, yeah, obviously they're competent because of X, Y, Z, and Theta, and also we need them to be able to move about freely. Yeah. I I hope it's yeah just that it's to be practical and to be nice. Uh, my fear is that it. Thank God you're here. Please stay. Here's a cake. Yeah. <laughs> I my fear is that it's being oh like even though it's the smart thing to do, my fear is that the motive behind it is to be manipulative because we can assume he's not telling them the whole truth in the same, and is aware that they're not telling him the whole truth. So I'm hoping that this isn't a ploy to manipulate them into telling him everything. Like, yeah. Cause it, like on the one hand it's like, okay, well they, they're clearly hiding stuff from me. I'll show them that they can trust me is one thing, but uh, I don't know. You can also frame that very differently yeah. in that like, I will unlock all their secrets, but first I must gain their trust, is the other way to frame that. And I, I don't want, I don't want Ironwood to be the bad guy here, I love him. I'm coming down on the side of, he, this is altruistic, and attempting to earn their trust, as opposed to, oh no, let's manipulate them, because he is burned the fuck out. Yeah. Like, when you are that burned out, here's all of these people who know the story, know what they're doing, have Oz with them, kind of, have Crow with them, and even if I'm not a huge fan of Crow, I know he can sure. be trusted and I've been working alongside him forever. This is just a lot of, I'll oh, give them thank their God. I'll give them their graduation certificates. Here you go, kids. <laughs> just, I really do think that part of it is just a this matter of... This one lets of, you drive. Here you go. Yeah. It's just a matter of they really need to be able to move about freely, especially if they are going to be yeah. agents in this war and operate autonomously. And if they have provisional student licenses, they can't do that. Well, and I wonder if having regular Huntsman licenses would have made getting through that initial barrier where um, uh, Cordova, I think yeah. was her name? Yeah. Yeah, uh, where Cordova was basically stopped them at the gate. And I know a lot of that was just her puffing out her chest. 
But like And Maria not helping. Oh yeah, and Maria definitely Maria not just helping. like I love you, but you ain't helping. If they had their huntsman licenses, I wonder if it would have made a difference to be like, We're huntsmen, we have business with Ironwood. I don't think so. I don't think so had, either. Well, I was gonna say they had Crow, but Crow was still kinda like at that point in time. So Yeah, Crow he, was he just wasn't like, a contributing member of the party at that point. He was still dealing with having the rug the entire yeah. rug of his life just his his whole energy level was Willy Wonka, stop, don't come back. <laughs> that entire second half of the season. More like that entire season. <laughs> that okay, was but it was level. less sarcastic, stop, don't come back, and more token effort because I have nothing in my life has been a lie. Like, <laughs> mm, he was dealing with some shit and For was sure. therefore not available to deal with some other shit. So the second, like, like, he needed to get his act together, but it's also like, yeah, I can kind of see why you're having trouble here. So Stop the second drinking. the kids got turned away, uh, he was like, well, we tried. Oh, well. <laughs> As opposed to, you have an official license, you son of a bitch, use it. <laughs> he had a... Or, you know, turn into a bird, you idiot. <laughs> and that would get him through partially, and then what? I don't know, fly to Atlas. <laughs> That's a long way as the crow flies. I don't know, man. <laughs> it would have been better than... In my opinion, him taking the longer trek, the kids staying with Jean's sister, and him finding Ironwood when he finally got to Atlas without alerting all of the military by flying a stolen ship in, maybe would have been a better option than just... But yeah, you're right. That would have required him to be sober and invested. <laughs> and, and he was not one of those the things. Problem. Um, I'm just saying. It took a lot of getting thrown around and being like, for fuck's sake, the kids are competent, but they still need you to be there. Yeah. You are still an adult with decades of life experience more than they have. Or at least a decade. And no, he, several. he seems to be in a much better place now to the point where he's yes. given good uncle advice. Yes. Although I'm, I am intrigued by Summer's last mission was a summer secret. As far as we can tell them... They never confirmed the death. They just assumed because she didn't come back. And when someone does not come back from a Huntsman mission, you assume that they're dead, especially if it's a long-ass time and they haven't come back. Like, Unless Oz actually does know and is just keeping mum about it. Possibly, yes. Like, it's entirely possible that that's another secret. But I would not be surprised if Summer was still out there somewhere and no one knew. Maybe the summer secret was that she was the summer maiden. Maybe. And didn't know how to deal with that in the same way that Spring didn't know how to deal with it. She took off and ran away. Or, worst case scenario, like absolute worst case scenario, she was the summer maiden, uh, either ran away or assumed she could take on Salem herself, or maybe thought she could reason with Salem. And then is now being, like, kept in one of, like, those Oz pin... She's just been kept in like, a tube. Stasi uh, like, yeah. Stasis. Uh, stasis yeah. chambers. Where uh, Salem's like, okay, we got one. We got one. Cinder makes two when she eventually gets her act together and comes back. And then We just need winter. to kidnap Raven. And that's three. And then <laughs> Winter. Mm. Hi, Winter. She's asleep down here. You can't see her. <laughs> yeah, she's not going to participate in this. She's drinking. But yeah, I mean, I would totally buy Summer not being dead and actually just being kept in like a crystal or something by Salem. Yeah, just because, I mean, you can't... Nobody know death. Yeah. That's not always the case in Ruby, because again, the, it, it, it makes sense that the assumption is, all right, she went off on a mission, well, and she didn't come back, she probably died, and because that happens a lot when you have a dangerous profession, and monsters that spawn out of hell, I would say out of nowhere, but let's be real, we've seen where they come from, I mean, and are emotionally driven. My, my assumption is that she's dead, because even though there's nothing in canon, like, in the show proper, that to say one way or another, other than she just didn't come back. Um, yeah. I would actually like to look at that gravestone again to see if, like, here lies. <laughs> because that would be a lie. <laughs> That's the case if her body was never recovered. But I think she's dead just based on Red Like Roses Part 2. Because mm -hmm. the mom's part, 
She goes, I don't want you to do what I did. I don't want you to end your life in vain. Ah. And maybe she means that in the metaphorical sense, but I think she means it in the literal sense. See, I assume she's dead, but with the never came back, they have officially left that door open. They have. So who knows? We'll find out. Uh, I appreciate the, I feel like I didn't know more than I did in Beacon. That feeling never goes away. It's like, nope. ah, yes, the feeling of, I need an adult. I am an adult. I need an adultier adult. Because <laughs> that's basically what it is, is I need an adultier adult. I do like the idea of, like, the kids going, oh, wow, this feels so trivial now. <laughs> because there are certain accomplishments where, like, you know, you get caught up with other things in life or... You know, it, it doesn't bring you the fulfillment that you think it will. Yeah. And so you're just like, oh. This was my goal oh. before everything went to hell. You know, your life priorities change. Mm -hmm. You lose people that you care about. Mm -hmm. or, you, or you just, like, outgrow the thing you were dreaming of. And yeah, some real stuff in here, Ruby. Good job, show. This That's one. That, I'm looking forward to Jean, uh... Chaperoning, chaperoning children. school children. <laughs> That's going to be Either so he's going to be a great chaperone or they are going to be all over him. And it could go either way at this point. I, I feel like he's going to have his hands full just based on his interactions with his sister. Just like, I'm not a baby. That's a baby. <laughs> Pointing to her toddler. <laughs> also, the, the talking with the Aesops about, yeah, no, we're not friends. That's the job. Yeah. It's like, okay, that leaves a lot of room for a snake in the grass there. Yeah. A lot of room. Ooh. And it's like, oh, yeah, you were specially picked because your talents and you counterbalance each other and this and that and the other and just like, and none of you have bonded at all over the course of this. None of you? At, no one's friend. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay. That's concerning. I, I feel like there's, again, that leaves a lot of room for a snake in the grass. That leaves yeah. a lot of room to drive wedges in between the team members if they don't have that extra intrapersonal bond. So just the whole, you know, it's the job, grow up, whatever. Like, no, no. This is very much a show where, while the power of friendship isn't the be-all, end-all, it helps a lot. Yeah. So, if only because positive emotions. Yeah. I'm thinking that what this is going to set up is that at some point they're going to get orders to apprehend Team Ruby or stop them in some capacity, and a few members of the Aesops are going to be like, yeah, that doesn't sound fun. And the rest of them are going to be like, orders are it's orders. Or we could wind up with one who, or more, who split off from the team and wind up oh, under no. Jacques' payroll. We Ooh, could have... Yeah. yeah, that's no good. We could have any number of things. Because if your loyalty to each other is only through employment, what happens when the job is gone? Yeah. Like, if you never make friends in the workplace, it's a little empty. And the fact that you're going into these life-threatening missions and there's no, no nothing like, hey, we survived that. Thanks for saving my life. It's, I no. expect you to save my life and I'll save yours. And that's how we work. Like, Yeah, there's no camaraderie. It's yeah. just like, you save me, I save you. And then we don't go get drinks afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Mm. There's no, well, you know, they we clock out and then we won't speak again until tomorrow. <laughs> they pick on Marin. Marrow. Marrow. Why do I keep saying Marrow? Oh my god. Uh, which, again, bringing back my Sorcerer Hunters days. Whoo! Talking that was about how there school. might be a potential snake in the grass. Maybe, in addition to being the dog and his reflection, maybe it is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Sort I of mean, story -like. if you've got a team that makes fun of you and is kind of like, oh, you're dumb, oh, you're not useful, oh, whatever, and you're not friends with them? Yeah! I mean, you probably wouldn't be friends with people who say that shit to you anyway. Because there's a lot. But, but, don't like, be, it would be don't one Don't be thing. friends with people who are assholes to you. It would don't be one it. thing if the, it was, like, good-natured teasing in the way that Jean gets kind of teased a lot. Oh, where yeah. It's like, yeah, it clearly annoys him, but there's so much love that binds them all together. Yeah. That, like, you know, it's it's done out of love. Um, 
But yeah, it, it would be one thing if it was like that, but yeah, having been explicitly told now that we're not friends, ooh, yeah. Like, oh, we're just continuing to haze the rookie, that's fun. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. He cool. hasn't been a rookie for five years, and we never Doesn't stopped matter. teasing he's him. He's still the newest guy <laughs> on the team. I assume he's the newest person I have no on idea. the team, given the way that they're treating him. That's... Ah, the enthusiasm of youth! <laughs> I love her. <laughs> She's the best. That's the thing. It's like, I love all these characters. And then knowing that none of them are... I was going to say, how is she is not friends with all of them? Yeah! <laughs> how is Clover not friends with all of them? I get hair being like, yeah, whatever. I work better yeah. on my own. None of you all can keep up. Mm. It's just better that way. I but kinda, it's just yeah, like, I get that. oh yeah, ain't none of us friends is like, uh, guys... You can be professionals and still friends. Like, just refusing to cultivate those bonds, refusing to ever... We have nothing in common, but we do fight good. Like, it's... I feel like that kind of stunts your growth as a team. If you can't be... You don't have to, like, love everyone you work with or whatever, but if you can't be friends with the people that you spend a lot of time with... Problems. So again, it leaves a lot of room for a traitor. Yeah. For one reason or another. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And goodness knows, have there been former Ace Ops who have retired or have been fired? Are they people we just don't talk about? Like, what... How is this team dynamic now that we know that they didn't start as a unit and don't consider themselves a unit outside of the bounds of employment? That's a great question. <sighs> because at Beacon, Huntsman teams are put together... You know, day like one. crazy random happenstance. Day one orientation. Um, Again, by crazy random happenstance, you yeet them into the forest and go. Literally the first person you see, and then depending on what chess piece you grab. Ta-da! Winner. Like, again, crazy random happenstance. Ozpin, you were a madman. <laughs> yeah! I was gonna say, maybe Ironwood's approach is better. I'm just, like, assigning aptitude. <laughs> I figure when you're a thousand years old, you get your kicks when you can. You know? <laughs> He's like, yeah, you know what would be fun? Launching the kids off a cliff today. <laughs> but I mean, at that point, for the most part, you should be trained and competent enough to have a landing strategy and he knew because Jean you've been didn't. combat school. Oh, yeah. and he knew Jean didn't. Husband is a madman. <laughs> but I mean, again, you get your kicks where you can. And there were enough kind-hearted people in that lineup that someone would have taken care of him. Probably. Oh, hold. Sorry. He hadn't activated his aura yet. That would have killed him. Oh yeah. Austin, you really you think that's man. the first time a student has died at Beacon? No, it definitely isn't because of Hazel's sister. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> what? Who died probably being launched off a cliff. <laughs> they said it was a training mission. I swear to God, he launched her off a cliff and she died. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure there's deaths at combat academies. All the time. Ew. Because that well, because they're combat academies, and when you start going on training missions, you cannot plan for every eventuality. You just can't. You can do your best, but sometimes a train breaks through the city itself and Grim pour out. And well, you're supposed to be junior <laughs> detectives investigating things, <laughs> but really, now you're in the middle of a Grim fight. You could not have accounted for any of this. This was not what you signed up for, but guess what? You're here now. Glad you got your weapon on you. Make the most of it. Not everyone survived that. We just saw a lot of named characters do cool shit. But not everyone survived that. So I'm telling Fun. you, going to a combat academy, I'm sure the waiver is amazing because it involves a certain amount of risk. Because it's combat. You're fighting with live weapons. You're fighting against other people with live weapons. You're fighting against monsters. And there is absolutely no, okay, time out, hands off, we're done. Like... Now you've got me wondering... Fucking port! Let a Borbatus go in class! Like, oh, you think you know what you're doing? Here's a fucking boar! Have fun, kids! Like, this Now you've got me go. thinking about how often Beacon was sued prior to the fall of Beacon Academy. And now you've got me thinking... That line of thinking has me thinking about... Oh, what does the legal system in Beacon look like? Are there lawyers? Probably. I feel like there are lawyers... 
Or is, I assume that there's copyright law. And then I'm like, well, now who makes the laws? Is it Ozpin? Is it the leaders of the individual academies? Because they seem to be <laughs> government officials and also running the military and like it I oh I've spiraled. See, you I've, said you said copyright laws and my brain went someplace different because YouTube is currently having problems because when does YouTube not My point is I'm problems? through the and looking now, glass now oh, no. and I don't know what's what Oh no, now I wanna know who's the markiplier of remnants? <laughs> Does Remnant have a YouTube? Uh, and how badly scroll? was it fucked when communications went down? Oh, <laughs> everyone man. who made their there were their, so uh, many live streams. Everyone who made their living on RemTube or Spasm <laughs> was like, shit. Oh no! <laughs> like, okay, time to figure something out. My livelihood. <laughs> Point, I'll get you us pin point being going to a combat academy comes with a certain amount of risk and given that there are academies leading up to them like we had signal before we had beacon like that is the kind of place that's supposed to weed out the people who maybe don't want to be there. Maybe they're better at weapons design and don't want to actually be in the combat side of things. Maybe I would imagine that that's one of those like all right you figure out what you're doing there, and then you go on to grad school that actually has to do with what you majored in. And I realize it's all accelerated. It's like picking your life's destination in fucking middle school, but still. <laughs> I'm a huntsman and also a lawyer. <laughs> I want to know about remnant lawyers. So you're basically a uh, Phoenix Wright in Marvel vs. Capcom. Hold it! <laughs> I was going to say, if we can get some uh, ace... Their uh, semblance is basically zone of truth. <laughs> Probably. Uh, if we could get some ace attorney characters in Blaze Blue, we could put that theory to the test and have Ruby fight, uh, fight Phoenix. And I'd be 100% okay with that. Forget Ruby fighting Phoenix. I want Clover to fight Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> Wet fight! <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Tell me I'm wrong. Uh, me I'm, wrong. I'm not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, whoa, this went down this went down several rabbit holes. Yep. There's a whole hutch down there. And we're just going for I it. I blame hair. Because rabbit holes. Oh, kid. That was a terrible homonyms. joke. Homonyms. That was a terrible joke. No, I, I just straight up, uh, homonyms. I had a moment. <laughs> yeah. It was anyway, a terrible point joke being, and I feel bad about it. If you go to combat school, people probably die there yep. because you're going on missions and it happens when you're in the field. You can't, you can't. <laughs> but they probably every don't advertise life. it very much because child murder the school doesn't sound super oh, appealing. Oh, God, absolutely not. <laughs> But you have to know going in because you're training for a life-threatening profession and sometimes that requires field work and yeah. Yep. Again, the super dangerous mission we saw Ruby and company go on was something that was supposed to be for third years <laughs> and Oz went, fuck it, let's go. He's like, YOLO. Sure, you cheaters, go for it. She's got silver eyes, it's fine. <laughs> like, yeah. um... This might as well happen. Let's see how this goes. Let's be real. A lot of Oz's planning was this might as well happen. <laughs> sure. Why not? Weirder things have happened. I've been alive for a long time. <laughs> I had no idea how the faunus happened. I came back to life and there they were. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was weird. Him just that was like, weird. What? <laughs> I had a lot of questions. Um, They're still not all answered because I had other priorities. No, uh, to get back to this episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jacques showing up. Oof. Oof. Just oof. Okay. Oof. It's been a while since we've seen him and we Whitley. I did appreciate, like, I told you I didn't want visitors. No, why did you let him in? He let himself in. <laughs> Like, on one hand, it's nice to see Whitley wrong-footed. On the other hand, it's like, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah, I, I can't like imagine that this. it would be fun 
for anybody to have a strange man in your house. Yeah, who when just you have waltzed like, in through the security system. Exactly. Assuming they have state-of-the-art security systems, which they Good definitely do. Yeah. Because they're rich. <laughs> that this guy just waltzed through. Yay! And again, he might be related to the... I, I don't would, think I that's would, the case. I would both love and hate that. Yup. Hi, Weiss! It's your Uncle Watts! Ah! <laughs> it's your Uncle Arthur! <laughs> God, wouldn't they have known? Not that either Winter or Weiss have seen him in a working for Salem capacity. I think this... They have I not. I think this is the first time he's been, like, out and about in the same no, realm as but our I, main character. I think... Also, if he noticed his niece running around, he would have you know, said something. Yeah, in, in terms of like, yeah, I feel like it would have come up at some point. But I don't know. Maybe they're just waiting for a like, hello, you know, and they're like, Uncle, what are you doing here? Who's that? He says my uncle. He seemed not surprised about Whitley, but definitely like, hmm, haven't seen you in a thousand years. He may or may not have known you existed. He's the spitting image of you, is what he said, yeah. He's certainly taken on your affect. I'm like, oh yeah, we knew Whitley was an asshole, like, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> knew that again, already. Look at time. Might not be related. Uh, again, they clearly, because Watts was a disgraced scientist, it's entirely possible that he just worked with the council in some capacity, so. Yeah, with might the not council, be that. or did something for Jacques? Or yeah. they just ran in similar circles, I mean, because clout chaser and has clout. Yeah. You know, you, mean, get, you get the remora fish. He's clearly a brilliant scientist and I'm sure the Schnee Dust Company would have appreciated the a input of a brilliant scientist. scientist either on the software or R&D department. Who may or may not have cared about the welfare of the miners. Ooh. Could you imagine Watts working at the Schnee Dust Corporation in R&D Oh my god. I hate and love that. <laughs> Shut up and I take mean, my money. If you if you look at our villain squad, as it were, we have a dude who's only allied for with Salem because he wants vengeance on Oz. We have the Cinder's leftover protégés who are like, Poor we should leave. This we is, should we're go. We're the fuck over our heads. <laughs> uh, we have... The person who may or may not love Salem and is definitely desperate for her approval. What does Watts get out of this? Why is he allied with Salem? What does he get? What is he doing? Destruction is the way of the future. I guess. But I think he's... Is he the only one where we don't explicitly know his motivation? Yes. Aside from I get to Frankenstein, whatever the fuck I want. That's all... Like, literally all we get from it is stuff that we can infer and that yeah. that seems to be it is that working with her allows him to do the type of experiments that he wants and maybe it's also a revenge thing because he's a disgraced Atlesian scientist so I don't know maybe it is partially revenge maybe it's a you know what why not, why not? or maybe it's a hey I got nowhere else to go yeah I, I, I don't know. She probably, after he was disgraced, probably found him and went, Hey, we could use someone of your know-how on our team. No ethics checks. No limits. Let's just do it. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's go. Did we ever figure out how Salem found Cinder? No. How that wound up happening? We, the only thing we know is that she promised her power. And that's it. Yes. And then Cinder was unceremoniously thrown out on her ass. Well, for not... Listening for, for not listening. It's not that she was not. thrown out. It's that she disobeyed. Disobeyed, and until she learns her lesson, she's not getting a pickup. It's mom going. She can walk home, and then we'll see, <laughs> and see if that teaches her a lesson. We're not gonna go pick her up. She insisted that she knew the bus system on her own. The fact that she's not home right now shows that she wasn't ready for that level of responsibility. Whereas I'm sure Cinder sees it as, I was abandoned. Well, fuck you then. She's not the, uh, she's, she's the grudge holding type. She I is the grudge holding type. I don't think it's an, uh, they abandoned me sort of thing. I think it's a, 
like this didn't pan out. I'm on my nobody's coming for me. I'm yeah. going I'm going on my own. And hey, I still haven't gotten the thing that I wanted, which is revenge on Ruby. Oh, hello Neo. What an excellent opportunity. <laughs> Which makes me wonder where Cinder's loyalty to Salem is at this point, whether it's even still there, whether she'll throw back in to get power. I'm, I'm kind of pondering the possibility of not necessarily a Zuko arc, but Cinder is a wild card at this point. Yeah, I think if she's still loyal to Salem, it's quite literally just out of fear, fear. of consequences. Um... Especially because Salem is the type of person to be like, well, I gave you power, I'll take it away. Um, and so uh, Cinder's motivation right now, if she's at all loyal to Salem, it is out of fear. And two, I'm sure that in her deluded mind, she thinks, well, if I can amass enough power to get whatever it is that Cinder wants, because if you know, the Cinderella analog is correct. She was probably in a position growing up where she was made to feel powerless for years oh, yeah. and years and years. And so having power for its own sake is her end-all be-all. Does that make Salem her fairy godmother? Yeah, probably. Shit. I mean, <laughs> that moment when your fairy godmother is more of a member of the Unseelie Court. I kind of threw that <laughs> out years ago when we when Salem was initially introduced because she's the Wicked Witch of the West. I was like, oh, that kind of makes it's her Cinder's also fairy godmother. Um, it's been a while. But also, so we many shows. say a lot of things, very few of which turn out to be relevant. <laughs> but occasionally you pick on one and then it's like, oh, by the way, this. It's like, oh, shit. And I've said oh, it once, I'll shit. say it again. You throw enough stuff at the wall, eventually something's going to stick. <laughs> if you Crisco the wall beforehand, it's a much more impressive feat. Why would you do that? You really think that this plot wall hasn't been highly Criscoed by the writers? I'm going to say that it's time to wrap up. Yeah, probably. The metaphors are getting away. What the hell are you talking about? Yeah. Crisco it? Yeah! yeah Why would you spray it on the wall? We're still speaking in a metaphorical context. Why would you throw things at the wall anyway? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, we're done. We're done. I'm putting the kibosh on this. Okay, my metaphor still makes sense. We're done. This is done. Okay, we're all go. Go. Okay, bye. No, do I your outro, you know. I can't move. <laughs> I can't leave. Um, my name is Megan, and uh, you guys can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the Manguin. That's T-H-E-M-E-N-G-U-I-N. I also have a YouTube channel called Silver Screams, uh, where we talk about horror things. And if you want to hear us talk more about this particular episode of Ruby and about the whole season so far, check out Rooster Team Radio for Ruby Redux. That well, is available on anchor.fm slash the Rooster Team it is or Rooster Team Radio. It is available on all your podcast apps of choice. Yes. I think we also have a YouTube channel. Where Mark does fun shit and puts it up. We do! Not as often as we used to, but yes. But there's still some fun stuff there. There's a tea public there if you want to support the whole team. Uh, we've got a skull and crossbones design where it's Nora as the skull and then broken femurs as the crossbones. I Break his leg! Princess Ponies did that one, right? I, was it Princess Ponies? I believe it was Princess Ponies. I believe Ponies. so. Beautiful design. We have a design that says, I hate the ships you love. Which is... Really good for this fandom. Uh, yeah. It's a good time. I'm Katie. You can follow me all over the social medias as well as on Twitch at Kiaxe. That is K-I-A-X-E-T. If you... I don't crisco the walls on any of my channels. I don't feel the need to. Um, you're having fun. You're yeah. having fun. Come on. Come on. This is fun for everyone. I'm just shaking my head. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. If you enjoy this batshit insanity, if you would like to support this batshit insanity and encourage us to be batshit insane, uh, there are a couple ways you can do that. We have the Patreon, which gets you these reactions early, which is why it's like, it's been like four weeks since the episode aired. Why isn't the reaction up yet? Well, it's probably on Patreon, where the patrons can watch it before it goes to the public. All of you wonderful human beings. Hello, patrons. We love you. Hello, people who aren't patrons. We also love you, too. Uh, if you want to throw a couple bucks our way, we have a Kofi. If you want to, we don't do requests, we do do commissions. And also, supporting our sponsor supports us, so 
Commission Fred. <laughs> get cookies, get things, they're good. All of the information is in the description below. If you would like to keep us from being eaten by the horrifying dust amalgamation that is the YouTube algorithm, do all these wonderful little buttons. You know how your standard YouTube call to action goes. Like, subscribe, ding. Thank you so much. Almost I almost made it. Damn. Oh, Blue shell at the finish line. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. We don't have Crisco, but we do have olive oil. What the fuck are you talking You're about? You're just... Yeah. I was going to try and bring the cat into the camera, and that just didn't work. Yeah, I think we're done for the night. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around, everybody. We love you. <laughs>